Hi, I'm Matthew McDonald, the author of Access 2007, The Missing Manual. And I'm going to explain how Access uses pivot tables. Pivot tables give you a way to analyze huge amounts of information. For example, you can use a pivot table to take a gigantic catalog of sales records and find out what products sell well at specific times of year, or what products sell well in specific countries, or what products are preferred by repeat customers. Pivot tables are a favorite tool for number crunchers working with spreadsheet programs like Excel. However, Access has a surprisingly powerful pivot table feature built right in. Pivot tables are only as good as the information that fuels them. The ideal candidate for a pivot table is a query that selects thousands of records and combines several related tables. If you try to use a pivot table to analyze just a few dozen records, you won't get very much out of it. In this screencast, I'm using the enormous AdventureWorks sample database, which weighs in with 20 megabytes of densely packed raw data. If you want to experiment on your own, you can download this database from the missing CD page for Access 2007, the missing manual. The Adventure database includes this ordered items query. It lists every item that's in every order that's been placed by every customer since the database was first created. The ordered items query is based on the sales order detail table and that has the full 62,000 ordered items in the database. The query uses relationships to pull information from several other tables besides sales order detail. It also gets information about the customer who made the order and information about the product that was ordered. To get a better sense of the information that's here, let's take a look at the first record returned by this query. Here, this record indicates the type of product that was ordered, it's a bike, the price of the item, the quantity of items that were ordered, the type of credit card that was used to pay, the shipping method, the customer, which in this case is a business named a bike store, and the city, state, and country where that customer is located. One thing you'll notice about this query is that the same values appear in many different records. For example, the same a bike store business has ordered several products. Similarly, if I scroll through the list, I'll find other customers in the same city, other customers ordering the same product, and other customers using the same type of credit card and the same shipping method. This structure is important because when I build my pivot table, I'll need to use grouping on some of these fields that share the same information. For example, I can group on customer city to get overall information about all the businesses in Seattle. If there wasn't any shared information, there wouldn't be anything to group with, and I wouldn't be able to create effective subtotals. Now let's get started building the pivot table. Unlike other access features, you don't need to create a separate database object to build your pivot table. Instead, you switch to a specially designated pivot table view. Every table and query can have a single pivot table view. To switch to pivot table view, you can click the view button and choose pivot table view from the drop down list, as I'm doing here or you can use the tiny pivot table view button that's at the bottom right of the access window next to all the other view buttons. Depending on the amount of information you're working with, you may need to wait while access takes a look at all your data. Initially, the pivot table view starts off as a group of placeholder regions. Before you can see any data, you need to tell access how to group your records to create subtotals. The trick to creating a pivot table is the pivot table field list window that floats above the main access window. The pivot table field list window lists all the fields that are in your table or your query. You tell access what to do with a column by dragging it to one of the four regions in the pivot table view. However, you don't need to use all your fields in your pivot table. Instead, you can zero in on the ones that are most important. 
The first detail Access needs to know is what piece of information you want to summarize. Usually this is a numeric piece of information, like the number of orders that were placed, the number of units that were sold, the cost of each order. In this example, I'm using the order quantity field, which tells us how many items were sold. To add it, I drag it to the section labeled Drop Totals or Details fields here. Now Access has enough information to create a pivot table, but it's a really simple one. All it does is list how many items were ordered in each order item record. To get more value out of the pivot table, I need to tell it how to subgroup my information. For example, maybe you want to know how many items were sold from each product category. To do this, you drag the product category field to the section labeled drop row fields here. Now, Access splits the list into product categories. However, there's still way too much information for this to be very meaningful. What I really want are the product category totals. To get these, I simply right-click the order quantity field, and I choose AutoCalc, and then Sum. This adds the total of each group to my pivot table. To take a better look, I right-click the Product Category field, and I choose Hide Details. Now, Access shows a single row for each product category with the total number of ordered items. You can create more sophisticated summaries by using more than one field to group your data. For example, imagine you want to look at the category breakdown and the customer country breakdown. To do this, I would drag the country field to the drop column fields here section. Now Access does something interesting. First, it divides my results into rows based on category, just like it did before. But now it subdivides each row into, a co into separate columns based on the country. Using this more detailed breakdown, I can see that the customers from Australia brought a th bought 1,556 bikes, but only 863 accessories. Pivot tables can get much more detailed than this. Right now I have two levels of grouping. In other words, there are two ways the total information is broken down, into category rows and into country columns. But for deeper analysis, I could subdivide my columns into more columns, and I could subdivide my rows into more rows. For example, let's say I want to look at how individual regions compare when it comes to ordering products. I can subdivide the country groups by state and province. All I need to do is to drag the state province field so that it's just after the country field. Now Access splits each country column into more sub-columns and I can see the individual state and province breakdown. In fact, I can even collapse the breakdown of areas that don't interest me using the handy plus and minus boxes, just like this. Or, I can drag the state province field to another location, or I can drag it right out of the pivot table if I don't want to use it anymore. Pivot tables are endlessly flexible in this way. When I close the query or switch to another view, Access will prompt me to save the pivot table design. At this point, if I choose yes, the pivot table settings will be stored so that I'll start with them the next time I switch to pivot table view for this table or this query. There's a lot more you can do with pivot tables. You can change the way they look, you can use them to build simple charts, you can perform calculations with the information in a pivot table, and you can filter out just the data that you're interested in. If you'd like to start experimenting, you can download the AdventureWorks database used in this screencast, or you can check out Access 2007, The Missing Manual.